Hi YouTube, it's your girl Ash and today I am back with another video. Before I get started, I want to say, as you can see, I'm filming in a different background. There is a glare from the window, so please forgive that. But today's video is a book haul that was inspired by Borrowthon, which is a readathon that is happening March 19th through the 26th, and it is hosted by Riley at RM Thick Fact, Michael at Michael Shelves and Books and Lala, and I will leave a link in the description down below for you to see Lala's video where she explains everything that is going to happen with Borrowthon. So I chose the six questions, the six challenges, I guess, that they gave as a guide to my library trip. And I was able to answer everyone but a book that features a library because the two books that I was super excited to get my hands on were not at my local library. So let's get right into the video so it is not super long. The first challenge is a book that you would like to purchase. And for me, that book is More Happy Than Not by Adam Silvera. I'm sure if you've been anywhere on BookTube, you have seen and heard about this book before. It follows Aaron, who is dealing with the suicide of his father and struggling to come to terms with his sexuality. And in his society, they have the Lateo Institute that offers a memory wiping service. And he is struggling with should he erase his memory or not. And then he meets Thomas and everything changes. I am super excited to read this, to have my hands on it. I have been wanting to read it since it came out last year. And book two went crazy for it. So hopefully it is a good read. Up next is a graphic novel. I happened upon this graphic novel watching Whitney at Witty Reads, if I'm not mistaken. And she hauled this a month ago. And it is Snow White by Mark Fallon. Forgive me if that is not the correct pronunciation. But this is the graphic novel telling of Snow White. I love the art in the book. I love how everything is dark. It said it was inspired by film noir. But the apple in the story is always red. And I love that. I'm hoping to get to this soon. It should be a quick read because it is super short. Up next is a author you've never read, and for me, that would be The Leaving by Tara Altabrando. I'm pretty sure I am butchering her name, but this is the story of six kids who go missing, and 11 years later, five return. And they have no recollection of the sixth child that went missing, but his sister won't answer. And I cannot wait to read this book because when it made its rounds on BookTube, everybody praised it. Hopefully it meets my expectations. Up next is a book that's been recommended because I don't know a lot of readers personally, I had to go with a Goodreads recommended book. And this book was recommended because I read Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli. And that is Winger by Andrew Smith. I'm kind of hesitant to read this book because everybody's reviews were very negative. And I think I heard that there was accusations of queer baiting in this book which I'm not a fan of but I'm going to give it a shot and if it's bad it came from the library I did not spend my own money so it won't be too much of a loss 
but it follows Ryan Dean, who is a 14-year-old junior at Pine, Pine Mountain, a boarding school for rich kids. He's stuck, he stuck rooming with the biggest jerk on the rugby team in the dorm for miscreants and troublemakers, and he's totally in love with his best friend, Annie, who thinks of him as a little kid. Okay. And so, hopefully, it's not as bad as everybody said it was. The next challenge is a book that is your favorite color. My favorite color is pink, always has been. And so, I chose Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins. This is the first book in the Anna and the French Kiss Companion Trilogy with Lola and the Boy Next Door and Isla and the Happily Ever After. And this is about Anna who lives in Atlanta. She has a best friend. She gets along with her co-workers and then her dad sends her to a boarding school in Paris and she meets a handsome guy and he has a girlfriend. But she's hoping that something can come of this relationship. Everybody seems to love this trilogy. So I'm hoping that this book is good so that I can move on to the next two. So those are the books for my Borrow-a-thon. Yes, the Borrow-a-thon inspiration. But I got a couple more. Mostly they are LGBT plus books that I was dying to get my hands on. So let's move right into that list. And up first is Fans of the Impossible Life by Kate Salsa. Forgive me if I'm messing up her name. But this story follows three teenagers. Myra, who is battling depression, and she moves to St. Francis Prep because her parents want her to pretend to be normal for at least the rest of high school. And Jeremy, who is a painfully shy nerd who is in isolation after some incident happened at his old school and ruined his last year of high school. And Sebi, who is Myra's gay best friend, and Jeremy falls in love with Sebi, but he also falls in love with Myra, and it is a love triangle. And when I read the description on Goodreads, I know I had to get my hands on it. I was waiting for it to come out in paperback, but I saw it at the library. I'm super excited because Julie Murphy blurbed it, who is the author of Dumpling, who was my number one book that I read last year. I loved Dumpling, and I have a review for Dumpling, and I will leave that in the description box down below. So next is a book that I am almost halfway finished. I started last night. I love it. I wish it was a million pages, and that is just Chunk and the Road Trip to Infinity by Kristen Elizabeth Clark, and this story follows Jeff, who is going on a cross-country trip to her father's wedding with her best friend, but the thing is, is that the last time Jess's father saw her, she was a boy named Jeremy, and her father never truly accepted that, and so she is going to confront him on his wedding, and another twist is that he is marrying her mother's best friend who he had an affair with after they got divorced. And this book is amazing. I would recommend it right now. I'm about halfway done. A review will be coming sometime next week. So look forward to that. Second to the last book is... Cut Both Ways by Carrie Mesrobin. And this book is about Will Kane, who, after a drunken makeout section, 
session with his best friend Angus is having a breakdown because he thinks that he is he thinks it's a possibility that he could be gay, but he knows it's not true because he still likes women and he meets Brandy at a party and falls in love with Brandy, but he's still carrying on a secret relationship with Angus. And so I think the the main character in this book is bisexual. I'm not sure if it explicitly states it or not, but if it is, I'll be super excited because bisexuality is a topic that is not touched or plainly stated in YA literature enough. If we're going to represent, we have to represent everybody. And for some reason, the the YA literature, you're either lesbian or you're gay. There's barely any bisexual characters. So I'm hoping that's what this book is so I can be super excited for it. And my last book is a much hyped booktube book recently. And that is Pretty Tiny Pretty Things. And I'm not even going to try the author's last name. But it's also Donnell Clayton. And this book takes place in a elite ballet school. And it says, shoulder to shoulder, we are a sea of paper-thin bodies. One large gust could push us around like the fall leaves tumbling past the lobby's picture windows. We are the light that vulnerable, that afraid. Everyone wants a soloist part. Everyone wants to be a prima ballerina of the American Ballet Conservatory. Everyone wants a spot in the company. Everyone wants to be the favorite, even me. And I am super excited about this because it was much hyped. So I'm hoping that it will be a five-star read. So far this year, my books have been really good and I will either do a review for this or there will be a wrap up when I finish all these books so that was my library book haul that was inspired by borrow a thon I hope everyone is encouraged to participate in borrow a thon because it is important that the library is used. I know it is wonderful when you have a book that you love and you buy books and you have a nice pretty bookshelf, but the library depends on people using it and that is what Borrowthon is about. Like I said, I will leave the link in the description to Books and Lala's channel where she talks about Borrowthon this year. So, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to follow me on all of my social medias linked below. If you feel inclined to do so, please subscribe. Please share this video. It would be graciously appreciated. And as always, until we meet again.